Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to the class of production engineering 2. Today's topic is about the formation damage and we will just first start from what is formation damage and what are the types of formation damage possible that are available uh, that are possible in it. So let's start with the section and see what it is. Well, there is a very famous saying in oil industry. As a production engineer, you will see here that the formation damage is an expensive headache to the oil and gas industry. Remember, we are talking about the keyword expensive. Expensive means it costs you money, actually, by two ways. Okay, first, you lose production. Okay, you lose cash flow. You lose production. At the same time, you have to spend money on it to correct it. So, what I will say here, lose production, lose production, and you spend money, money to solve it. So you have two issues with this formation damage and we don't want it as a product it's a nightmare for us we don't want it we don't want this formation damage so formation damage is a generic terminology referring it's a general term okay we formation damage we are not saying that uh, what kind of formation damage has happened okay so just a general term this formation damage it could be any reason it could be you know there are many ways that formation can be damaged so this is just a generic term that we are talking about and what we are talking about is impairment. What is, what is the meaning of impairment is the blockage means or plugging of the permeability as you know of petroleum bearing formation. So what is doing it is blocking the permeability or reducing the permeability. That's what is going on. So formation damage is an undesirable operational and economic problem. It's an economic problem. So formation damage issue, we don't want it. And it's at the same time, it is an economic issue. And we don't want it during the oil and gas recovery phases from the reservoirs as they have. So how we define it as expressed by this MFU, how we define it, the impairment of the invisible, you know, look at the very nice definition, impairment of the invisible. We say invisible because we cannot reach to the reservoir. We are just sitting, standing at the surface by the inevitable, okay, and uncontrollable, resulting in an indeterminate reduction of production of unquantifiable. So it's invisible by the inevitable. I mean, you something you cannot avoid. So formation damage is, can happen during drilling production. And so and uncontrollable sometimes you cannot control it because formation damage is unavoidable and it cannot be controllable. At some point in the life of the well, it will happen. So we the damage we cannot assess is totally. It's still, still our technology is not enough that we can totally assess. But we can yeah somehow guess it. And uh, of course, the unquantifiable. The reserves are still you know 100% not sure exactly how much they are there so it's a very nice definition impairment of the invisible by the inevitable uncontrollable indeterminate reduction of unquantifiable okay so assessment control remediation is the most important issues and it costs money and there are many companies who are dealing with this formation damage issue and they help you to to uh, to solve this problem to minimize this problem it cannot be reversed so it just can be solved so now look at this picture very nice picture impact of formation damage let's look at the first uh, one first of all there are two scenarios in this one in the first scenario there's a sand production sand is producing now look if this sand is producing from here this sand can go inside the formation it can do the damage all to the tubing your tubing can you remember the oil and gas which is coming is under very high pressure sometimes 2000 psi 3000 psi even more here in Kurdistan, we have well filled with more thousand, more than 4,000 psi uh, initial pressure. So with that much pressure, this sand can cut this tubing spring, cut this well head, and damage this choke, damage this pipeline, damage the separator. So all can be damaged. All can be damaged by this sand production, sand particles. So it's so really, at the same time, reduces the production here. This is the issue. The other issue here is that near well bore, as you see here, as the here at this point there's a damage there's no permeability for oil to flow so now because of there's damage the permeable pressure was supposed to be like this but actually is dropped seen from p3 pressure is dropped so so when the pressure is dropped there's a lot of problem formation damage we call it a positive skin skin is the keyword that we use to describe the skin like magnitude of the skin how much is the formation damage so Negative skin means the well is more than the normal. It has more permeability than the normal. It happens only when you do the stimulation job sometimes and when it has lots of fractures 
in, in the reservoir. So this kind of situation can happen. On the other side, when we there is an original formation, original permeability, and uh, so it has no stimulation, it has no damage, so we call it a zero skin. But when there is a severe formation damage, okay, it can cause the it can cause the production decline, pressure decline at the same time. Remember, for example, if we the if you have the skin of 10, the production may decline around 7, 8, uh, 50 percent, 40 percent, 60 percent, you know, around that much. So 10 plus, for example, if skin is 20 percent, 20. So 20 is means your form production is declined more than 50 percent for what it is able to produce. Let's say if it is to able to produce 1,000 barrels, it will be able to produce around 400 to 450 barrels per day. So that much damage you can do the uh, damage. <coughs> so why this happens? This is the question. Why this formation damage happen? It can be happen because of the physical uh, mechanisms and chemical issues, physical chemical both related, chemical, biological, okay, hydrodynamic, thermal interaction of porous media, particle, fluids, and mechanical deformation because of the stress and the fluid shear. So this can happen during drilling production, work over fracking operations. So formation damage could, could be chemical, could be biological, could be physical, could be, you know, combination of all, could be, you know, and it can happen during drilling, production, work cover and hydraulic fracking. It can happen anytime. We have, we just make sure that it does not happen. We just pray that it do not happen and we try to, to also predict if there is formation damage is possible or not. So what we say the indicator includes permeability impairment, skin damage, and uh, decrease of the well performance. And uh, remember that this formation damage, what we are talking about, is not necessarily uh, reversible at the same time. So it's not necessary that uh, it. Yes. So what we say here that this formation is not necessarily reversible. What gets inside the porous media does not necessarily come out. So what happens once cannot be reversed. So it's not reversible process necessary. You can minimize it, but you cannot completely you know, reverse it. That's the issue. And of course, for minimizing, you have to spend a lot of money to minimize this formation damage at the same time. Now, potential for the permeability of the near well board being reduced exists from the moment the drill bit enters the formation until the well is finally abandoned. So the potential for this uh, formation damage starts when the drill bit hit the pay zone. For example, this is the pay zone. Uh, this is the pay zone here we have. This is the surface of the earth. So when you the your rig is here located and when this drill bit goes down, reaches till here, exactly from here the formation damage can start because as you know the drilling fluid is circulated you have to do the completion you have to do the packers you have to you sometimes uh, you know do the perforation so all these things can you know do trigger the formation damage at the same time there's unconsolidated formation and the formation is not really strong maybe the sand particle dust particle starts to come into the surface so it can be a, it can cause a big damage to the uh, the this one to the well so process which leads to formation damage acts through a restriction of flow or due to either physical blockage so there could be a physical blockage maybe there is a, a swelling of the pores or maybe there's a stones or maybe there's sand particles that blocks it or maybe because of drilling fluid drilling fluid is lost inside the pay zone you know and because of completion fluids so it could be physical blockage it could the relative permeability could be because of the Rotability changes, you know, chemical changes, surface changes of this uh, formation. So mainly we talk about the rotability here, and uh, it's a very important term in oil and gas industry. The above effects can be accentuated at high flow rates when turbulent flow may occur. So leading to much greater pressure losses than occurred of the same flow rate before the formation damage took place. So other could be related with the pressure related or temperature related. So it could be because of relative permeability, it could be because of physical stresses, it could be because of this pressure and temperature, it could be because of some other chemical reasons. Okay, so so what we say that the formation damage is not necessarily reversible. So we, but at the same time, we don't know when it will happen, but still as a production engineer, our job is to predict, is there any chance of production damage in the future or not? This is our job as the as a production engineer. The, so in, in in short, what we say that it is better to avoid the formation damage than try to restore formation permeability using costly methods. 
So avoid formation damage, then try to restore. And when a verified generalized formation damage model becomes available, it can be used to develop strategies. So for example, you can minimize it. For example, you are drilling the well. The good question came is how can we minimize it? For example, you are drilling in a pay zone. Okay, exactly. You are drilling in, in the pay zone. In the pay zone, use underbalanced drilling so that your fluid should not be lost inside the pay zone. This, or use the fluid minimum amount of liquids during the, the perforations or during the completion or use the mechanical based packers. So try to minimize the liquid injection inside this pay zone so that the formation damage remains the minimum. So there are various problems that can happen and uh, there are the could be because of the mineralogy of the reservoir rock, could be the composition of the fluid because of the temperature and stress conditions, because of the practices of the operating operating company. Maybe they want to produce just too much at the same time. So where exactly you are putting your production wells? Okay. And it can happen because of the foreign fluid. For example, you are doing the EOR, you know, injecting water, injecting gas, such as water and chemical used for improved recovery, drilling mud invasion, work over fluids, invasion of foreign particles, and mobilization of indigenous particles such as sand, mud fines, bacteria, debris, and all of them could cause the 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 formation damage. Operational condition, flow rates, you know, there is a critical flow rate above it may be it may produce asphaltines, you know, sometimes the bags. So operate sometimes the flow rate can solve the problem. Properties of the formation fluid, porous media, porous matrix and uh, foreign particle mobilization of indigenous particles and mud fines you know these all can cause the, the the formation damage furthermore the formation damage mechanism can be summarized in like fluid fluid incompatibility for example you are sending uh, one fluid the fluid fluid incompatibility means for example uh, you have the mature ground field and now you want to inject the gas now what happens when you inject the gas in the reservoir their emulsions are formed generated between invading oil based mud filtrate and formation water so maybe the fluids are not compatible and they form a foamy kind of a situation so there is no production but rather there is a described the, the issue of oil production there so now let's look at the the this very nice picture it shows lots of formation damage possible they have there let's look at this one so we divide the damage physical or we divide them into the chemical now in the mechanical physically you know there could be a dust or sand particle movement you know in the same time or there could be a phase trap means oil is trapped inside the rock or it could be because you know perforation because perforation is stressed or reduced the compressed the the area nearby well bore and you know cause the issue so phase trapping as you know could be water could be trapped a lot will is not giving pass to the oil or it oil is trapped already and not moving and when we talk about the solid migrations, we have the mud solid during drilling and dirty injection fluids, whatever we are injecting. Could be because of foam, could be geomanical. Mostly that we hear about it is the phase migration or we because of the perforation. These are quite common. Phase trapping also is quite common during UR process. So these are quite common. Chemically, you know, vitability, major issue. And there's a lot of research going on on this. Foaming issue. And uh, as you know, the solids, from the fluid fluid interaction there could be asphaltine there could be wax and hydrates hydrate formation these are quite common i what i see if you look at the one petrol research on these are the quite common issues going on there so clay swelling quite common adsorption so there is polymer injection quite common ionic they are all common as you see that what i'm talking about here most of them are highly possible formation damage and uh, it, they are not desired they are a headache and they be, just to remove them we need a lot of money okay so as i said because fluid 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 rock incompatible rock maybe clay becomes swelling solid invasion maybe you are because of drilling fluids and phase trapping and blocking chemical adsorption vitability alteration fines migration for example of internal movement of fines biological activity so these are the reasons for for formation damage and we as a uh, flow assurance team or team that handles the formation damage we want the geologists and geochemists we want the chemistry we want petroleum engineers and chemical engineers at the same time who who knows the transport phenomena in porous media simulator development you know they should know what exactly is going on in the reservoir 
So they work together, they work hard in order to assess the problem and they try to solve the problem. Uh, problem. So now I will show you some of the videos before ending this and look at the formation damage that has happened and how it, it is doing the problem. Formation damage are invasion of drilling mud solids or filtrate into the formation, expansion of water sensitive native clays, and the invasion of solids from the completion fluid into the formation. Research has shown that the solid particles carried into the formation pores are the main cause of permeability impairment, and such impairment is dependent on the size of the particles and the permeability of the formation. Shallow invasion of these particles will occur when their diameter is roughly 10 to 30 percent of the mean pore diameter of the formation, as indicated by this table. It is easier to damage higher permeability reservoirs because fluid losses can carry solids deeper into the formation. Formation damage caused by drilling fluids may be minimized by properly sized mud solids, which quickly form a protective filter cake, drilling with clear filtered weighted fluids, underbalanced drilling, and post-drilling stimulation. Particularly when drilling with freshwater muds, mud filtrate invasion can cause permeability reduction due to the swelling of native clays and their dispersion in the pores of the formation. Low concentrations of potassium or calcium chloride in completion fluids have been found helpful in preventing such damage. Although the perforating process itself always causes some damage due to the crushing of the rock surrounding the perforation, the major causes of perforating damage are solids plugging during overbalanced perforating and inadequate perforation density and or length. Underbalanced perforating using through tubing or tubing conveyed techniques and the use of clear filtered completion brines hold the greatest promise for reducing such damage. A minimum of four shots per foot, preferably more, properly sized charges and centralized guns can also increase the number of perforations contributing to flow. The importance of clean completion fluids cannot be overemphasized. Careful rinsing of mud tanks, removal of scale, rust and paint from drill pipe, minimal use of pipe dope on connections, and constant monitoring of filtering elements are drilling procedures which are becoming standard practice with many companies. The added cost of these procedures is more... Video, it shows the formation damage. See now how this drilling fluid is drilling going inside the rocks and mud, mud filtrate, mud solids. So it has four stages as you see that. This is mud. And here is the, again I will show you, see this mud filter, it's going inside the formation and damaging the formation. Now imagine if you are producing from this zone, how you can produce? It's already blocked and there's no permeability. It's, here is nice permeability, but here you cannot do anything. It's severely damaged. Flow of fluids. It is measured to permeability defines the ability of a reservoir to permit the flow of fluids. It is measured in darcies or millidarcies and is represented by the letter kappa. A permeability value can be indicated but not directly measured from well logged data. Core analysis, however, can provide an actual measurement. According to Darcy's law, the volume of fluid flow per unit of time, Q, is equal to the negative of the permeability multiply by the cross-sectional area, multiplied by the pressure gradient, and divided by the viscosity of the fluid and the length of the rock sample. Therefore, the permeability is one Darcy when one cubic centimeter of fluid flows in one second through a medium that is one square centimeter in cross-sectional area and one centimeter in length under a pressure differential of one atmosphere per centimeter, where the fluid has a viscosity of one centipoise. Permeability is controlled by the size of the pore throats, the connecting passages between pores. Permeability often decreases with depth because compaction and cementation restricts or blocks fluid pathways and therefore reduces flow rate. When only one fluid, such as water, exists in the pores, its permeability is known as absolute permeability, K. When two fluids are present, such as oil and water, the permeability of the oil is known as its effective permeability, 
K sub O. The effective diameter of the pores through which the oil is flowing is reduced by the water which adheres to the grains. Therefore, effective permeability is less than absolute permeability. And finally, relative permeability, K sub RO, is the ratio of the effective permeability of a given fluid to its absolute permeability. Standard curves plot the relative permeabilities of the two fluids as a function of water saturation. Thus, in a typical relative permeability curve, we see that at low water saturation, only oil will flow. As the water saturation increases, the relative permeability of the oil decreases until some critical level is reached, at which both oil and water flow. The oil flow continues to decrease and the water flow to increase as water saturation increases. At some level of water saturation, oil no longer flows and only water flows. Beyond this point, as water saturation increases, the flow of water within the rock continues to increase. So thank you very much for this lecture and see you in the next lecture. We will talk about the acidizing job and how it is done and what are the formulas for it. And uh, I will show you some nice videos about it also, how to perform it.